In today's chess video, I'm going to show you some amazing chess opening tricks and traps in the England Gambit. And plus, I also have a really interesting chess puzzle for you all. So stay tuned till the end and keep watching Chess Talk. Let's start with the opening d4 and then e5. This is called the England Gambit. This is not an opening I would recommend for black, but since this is not played that often, many white players don't know how to respond to this, and that's what you need to take advantage of, especially in blitz and bullet games. There are some very nasty traps that you can set up as black, and believe me, you can completely destroy your opponent if he does not play correctly. Okay, from here, white obviously takes your pawn. He's getting it for free, so why not? Then you bring out your knight to attack this pawn. White develops his knight and supports it. Then we play queen e7, adding another attacker. White brings out his bishop to defend. And that's when you play this stunning move, queen b4, check. Launching a double attack on the king and bishop. White has two logical replies. He can either block this check with his queen or bishop. If he blocks with his queen, then he's gone. Let me show you how. After queen d2, we take this pawn on b2. His rook is in trouble, so the only way he can save it is by offering to exchange queens. But to his surprise, we have this beautiful move, bishop to b4, and this sweetie is gone. Now let's go back. In this position, if white blocks this check with his bishop, then again we will take on b2. And now comes the most tricky part in the game. If white plays this move correctly, then he will have a solid advantage. But if he messes it up, then it's curtains for him. If you think logically, there are two main moves that white can play to save his rook. One is bishop to c3 and the other is knight to c3. The most tempting option would be bishop to c3 attacking the queen. I have personally seen most players moving their bishop, especially in the blitz and bullet format. And that is a big mistake. Let me show you the consequences. After white plays bishop c3, we will play the lethal move bishop b4. If he takes our bishop, then we can take back with our knight. Now we are double attacking this pawn and even threatening to fork the king and rook. This looks very unpleasant for white. And there isn't much that he can do from here. He will have to sacrifice his knight and then it's just a matter of time before he's knocked off. Going back, in this position if he plays queen to d2, then we can simply take this bishop. He cannot take back with his queen because then queen to c3 would be a checkmate. So he will have to take with his knight. But then he loses his rook. And even if you analyze this position, more or less this game is over. You should easily win it from here. Going back, now let me show you how white should play this. But wait, are you enjoying this video? If yes, then hit that thumbs up button right now. It really motivates me and helps me in planning the future content on this channel. Okay, let's flip the board. We now know that bishop c3 is a very bad move. The best move for white is knight to c3. There's nothing much black can do from here. I will go through the most common moves that you can expect from black. If he plays bishop b4, then you can play rook to b1, attacking the queen. Then queen a3. And then you can play knight d5, attacking the bishop with these three pieces and at the same time threatening a fork on the next move. If bishop takes, then queen takes. Black is then forced to play king d8 to stop the check. Then you can play queen to g5 check and as you can see you have a lot of attacking options from here. So it should be a good game for you. Going back, in this position if he decides to move his bishop back to a5, protecting this pawn, then you can simply play rook b5. Bishop d2 will lead to the same line as we discussed earlier. And if he plays bishop to b6, then you can simply take with your rook. Now no matter how he takes your rook, you can simply play knight c7 check. Then king d8, knight takes rook, queen takes knight and still if you see we are way ahead in development, black can't castle and we have an extra pawn as well. So again you have a solid advantage. Going back. In this position, if black plays something like knight to b4, attacking this pawn, then you can easily defuse this by playing knight to d4. Going back again, if he decides to run away with his queen like this, then you can attack it with knight to d5. And as soon as the queen moves, you can take this pawn and then take his rook. 
Moral of the story is that if you play this correctly as white, then you will always be dominating this game. Okay, so it's puzzle time. But before moving on to today's chess puzzle, I would like to remind that if you want to learn some cool chess tricks and become a better chess player, then you should subscribe to our channel right now. And don't forget to hit the bell to turn on all notifications. Okay, so here's the puzzle. In this position, it's your turn and you need to find the best move continuation for white. If you're able to find the solution to this puzzle, then share it in the comments below. Whoever gives the correct answer with the perfect explanation, I'll be pinning that comment at the top so that everyone can see it. All the best guys, let's see how many of you can solve this. Well, don't forget to like this video and if you haven't yet subscribed, then subscribe now. Thanks for watching and I shall see you in my next video.